Welcome back. This is lesson three of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session two. And uh, we stopped in the previous lesson on looking at the uh, columns of our data frame. So we wanted to understand what columns are there and what they actually mean. And uh, this is what we'll do now. We'll do exploratory data analysis. We want to understand how the data looks like, just to get a feeling what kind of values are there and uh, just to learn more about uh, the data and uh, about the problem. So we already know that some of these, um, uh, some of these uh, columns are strings, right? We also know that some of them are uh, numbers. And uh, yeah, so we have basically strings and uh, numbers, right? So let's try to see, uh, what we actually have there. So for that, uh, so this is our data frame. So what we can do is we can uh, take a look at each uh, each column here and try to understand what kind of data uh, we have there. So we have these uh, columns, right? Which gives us the list of columns. What we can do is we can just iterate over them. And uh, for each of these columns, print some statistics and maybe print some values and see uh, what kind of data is there. So let's do this. So first we can print the column name, like column name and maybe some values. So print uh, df col. So it, it tells us, uh, okay, we have this, uh, at one extra line break here. So we have model make, and this uh, is how the first five values look like. So then, uh, so basically this is the manufacturer of a car, model, year. So this is maybe not very informative because these are the first values. So maybe what is more interesting for us is to look at unique values. Because yeah, here we get that it's all BMW. It's interesting to know what are the other values that we have there? So what we can do is let's say call this method uh, unique and it returns unique values in the, the in the series. So BMW will be only once. Don't want to see all unique values. Let's just take a look at uh, first five. So um, and perhaps what will also be interesting is to know how many unique values are there. And for that, we use this n unique, which basically n unique, yeah, which basically tells us how many unique values are there. So, for example, for the first one we have is manufacturer. And um, so these are the first unique values that we have, BMW, Audi, Fiat, Mercedes-Benz, Chrysler, and there are 48 different values. So for model, of course, model is more um, granular. So there are more different models because for each manufacturer, they have multiple models. So that's why we have a lot more values. So here is a numerical uh, variable. So this is numerical column. It has different years. 28 of them. So this is the type of engine. So fuel that it gets like, um, I'm not a car expert. I know there is diesel and there's others, I guess. So there are 10 different types. Then this one is engine horsepower. Like how powerful the engine is, um, how many cylinders are there, transmission type, um, driven wheels and all these kind of things we potentially can know about the car. So all these characteristics, uh, then highway MPG, I think it's highway miles per gallon, like how many miles it can drive per gallon of um, petroleum, like of fuel, then city, like how many miles it can drive in a city per, uh, per gallon. And popularity, this is something the authors of this data set did is they uh, took a look at uh, Twitter and extracted how many mentions uh, a car had. So basically the idea here is a more popular car has more mentions. And then finally this MSRP, this is what we want to predict. So these are the, the prices of cars. So of course there are many, many different 
uh, values here. Okay, so this is the data we have. And now what we will do next is we will look at uh, this price, this price column closer. So for that we will use, uh, we will visualize it. Uh, we will want to look at graphically because looking at these numbers is uh, not very informative. Right? So we don't see the, the big picture. So for this, for uh, plotting, we will use uh, uh, two libraries. So one is called matplotlib, matplotlib and the other one is Seaborn. So matplotlib is more like low level one and Seaborn is a library on top of it, uh, it that makes things easier. So we'll just see in a moment how to use this. And this line here is needed to make sure that uh, all these uh, plots can be displayed in a notebook. So we, we need to have this. So what we want to look now is at the distribution of prices to see how many different uh, prices are there. And um, so I'll just, um, you know, if you know what histogram is, this is what we want to do. If you don't, you'll see now. Uh, so we want to plot the histogram of MSRP and it will just show us the shape of data. So this is not uh, um, very easy to see. Let's use uh, smaller amount of bins. So bins is basically, uh, so now let me execute. So you see uh, here, this, uh, this bar. So bins is how many bars we actually have. So here, we would have uh, 40 bars or 50 bars, sorry. So we can also say, let's have, uh, I don't know, 10. So the bars will be a lot bigger, right? So let's use 50. And what we see here is, uh, so this is how the distribution of data and then this notation here. Uh, so this actually is uh, 1 million. So this is scientific notation. Uh, one E six means uh, ten to six, and yeah. So this is basically one million. So what we see is there. Uh, there are a lot of prices that are pretty cheap. So like most of the cars are here, right? And then there is very few cars that are super expensive. So maybe there is just one car that costs 1 million. Maybe there is one car that, ah, it's, it's 2 million. So there is maybe one car that costs 2 million. There is maybe one car that costs uh, 1.5 million. Maybe there are a few cars that cost uh, 1 million. So there are not so many of them, right? And the majority, like most of the data is concentrated here. And uh, this effect is called, uh, like this kind of distribution is called long tail distribution because you can think of this as a tail, right? So this is like, there are, uh, it's very shallow. So there are not so many values, but uh, they have huge values, but most of the data is located here. So this is a long tail distribution. So we need to zoom out, uh, to zoom in a bit. So for that, what we can do is we can just, uh, let's say, look at uh, prices that are, not so large, let's say 100,000. Uh, so here it's a bit clearer. So now we can actually see and uh, I think what we are looking at uh, here is this part, right? So only a little bit here. So we don't look at this at all, at this tail. So we look only at this here, we just zoomed in on that. So this is how it looks like. So this one is uh, like it's easier to actually see visually. So most of the cars they are so yeah. So this is like maybe the average price is somewhere here. Um, and uh, yeah, so this we we see that this is actually one uh, one thousand. So we have this strange peak of cars uh, that cost 1000. Probably this is the minimal price that is possible uh, to put on this platform. That's why we have a bunch of cars that cost 1000. And then, uh, yeah, so it slowly goes to, uh, to I don't know, it's some 25,000, I think. 
and then uh, like uh, we have a lot of cars uh, around uh, 700 cars that cost around 25,000 and then the number of cars with this uh, price it goes down I think it's pretty reasonable to expect this kind of distribution so the only um, the only strange thing is here this 1000 but uh, so while it's not unexpected to see a distribution like this, especially in prices, and these long tail distributions are very common for prices because there are most of the things are cheap, like for general public, let's say, but there are a few super expensive ones. There are not so many people who can afford buying expensive ones. That's why there are not so many, but there are some people who can actually afford. So for those, there is this... Uh, like very few ones that are expensive, but for the rest of the population, we have cheaper cars. This kind of distribution is not really good for uh, machine learning. So this tail will confuse our model, right? So it will really screw things. So what we want to do is we want to get rid of this long tail. And for that, what we usually do is we apply the logarithmic distribution. So we apply the logarithm to the price and we get, uh, let's say, more compact values. And uh, the logarithm, so let me just uh, show you. So it, uh, for large values, the, the value of the logarithm is not that large, right? So you see here we go like from 10 to 1000, but the increase between the logarithm of them is not that high, right? So it uh, kind of brings very high values and uh, makes them lower. So this is one we want to use. The problem with just logarithm is if we have a zero here, then it complains, right? So it cannot, uh, there is a logarithm of zero doesn't exist. Even though it's not the case for our particular case, in our case, we have prices that are always 1,000 or more, it's pretty common to add one to all the, so we just add one everywhere. And this way we make sure that uh, we don't have this situation. So the logarithm of one is zero and yeah, the logarithm of zero doesn't exist. So we just add one everywhere. And that's why we make sure that, uh, you know, things, uh, Things are always positive, so and uh, we don't have these situations when uh, we get uh, problems. And then we, we we don't want to add this plus one every time time manually. So there is actually a function in uh, NumPy that can help us. It's a shortcut, so it's called uh, log one uh, p. So it takes it does uh, one p stands for plus one. Um, so it adds one to all the values and then it takes the logarithm. So this is actually the same as uh, we did previously. So just for a few values, uh, type it uh, for these two. So we see that, okay. So we see that the values here that we have, they are exactly the same. Okay. So NumPy just does this plus one for us. So we want to use this uh, for uh, our prices. So let's see, let's call it lock price locks. And uh, we'll use this uh, lock one P function. So here, yeah, so now if we look at the, this, uh, this series now, yeah, so it uh, it looks different now. So all these uh, values became smaller. We can draw it now. We can plot a histogram. Let's do this. This is how it looks like now. So the, the tail is gone. So you see that, uh, yeah, so there is no tail. Like all these... Uh, all these large prices, they kind of collapse into this area, right? And all the prices, like all the cars for usual consumers, they're still concentrated around here. And this uh, this shape now, 
resembles uh, a bit this bell curve shape. See, it's like this is uh, this called normal distribution. Normal distribution. And uh, having a distribution uh, that looks like normal, even though, yeah, we have here this weird peak. But anyway, so this looks more like normal. So we have like a clear uh, center of the distribution. And then it, uh, when it goes to the left or to the right, it uh, kind of goes down. Right. So this situation is ideal for models. So models, if your target variable looks like that, models do uh, quite well when they need to predict uh, this. Uh, I mean, they do a lot better than with long tail, tail distributions. And long tail distributions usually confuse models. So we typically want to get rid of um, long tail distributions. And one way of doing this is exactly what we just saw is applying the logarithm of the price. Okay, so um, what we also want to do um, before we finish uh, this lesson is look at the missing values. So we have, uh, we have some uh, data and some of these values might be missing. Uh, I don't know if we saw here, like when we were looking. Yeah, so let's say number of doors, you see that there is this none. So none means not a number, or uh, in pandas it usually uh, means that uh, this value doesn't uh, is is missing, so it wasn't recorded. So let's see how many of them are there. So for that we, there is a function called is now in uh, pandas. So this uh, for every cell it says if uh, this the value in this cell is. Uh, Null or not, it's missing or not. It's not uh, super useful in this uh, form. That's why we do sum. So it uh, sums across um, columns. And then for each column, it tells us how many missing values are there. And we see that there are um, quite a few missing values. So uh, for some cars, we don't know what's the fuel type, what's the market category, how many horsepowers um, are there, how many cylinders are there. So this is something we'll need to keep in mind when we actually um, do, uh, when we train our model. Okay, and um, that's it. So we look at the, uh, at the different values. So we try to make sense uh, from the data. So we need to take a look at this. Then next we look at the distribution of the price and concluded that it has long tail. That's why we remove the effect of long tail with a logarithm transformation. And then we finally, at the end, we looked uh, at the missing values and we saw that, uh, yeah, there are missing values and we know that before training a model, we will need to do something with them. Okay. And in the next lesson, we will uh, uh, talk about setting up the validation framework. Before we train a model, we need to make sure that we can validate the model. And we will set up this framework in the next lesson.